3D printing isn't really printing at all. Then again, the more technical term, additive manufacturing, is only partially more accurate in describing the various methods that jointly fall under its widely used and fairly wide definition. With some technologies you add, with others it's more a case of subtracting. Mostly it's a process that involves melding material to the end of forming an object or a batch of objects directly from a three-dimensional template or drawing generated on a computer. So what exactly is 3D printing and why does it matter to architecture? In this MOOC we will demonstrate some of the currently available 3D printing methods, but by way of an introduction it is worth noting that the principle for all of them is the same even if they arrive at distinct results by decidedly different means. What actually happens in 3D printing, and this again is principally the same irrespective of which method or process you use, is that minute particles of a liquid, viscous or dry pulverised material are fused, melded or glued together to form a solid object. And what makes the technology famously versatile is that the methods and processes available to do so cover such a wide range of materials that virtually anything you can design or scan and therefore visualise in a piece of 3D software you can then also print. But when we say anything you can visualise, you can print, we have to and immediately add a major caveat, if perhaps not so much in theory as in practice. The challenges you face with 3D printing are still legion, for example, when it comes to haptics. Many digitally printed materials, such as resins and plastic, simply don't feel as good to the touch as wood, metal or stone. And yes, you can print metal or ceramics and even wood-derived materials, but doing so well is neither simple nor quick. It can be messy, laborious, wasteful and expensive. The point to be made here, therefore, is not a blanket statement about quality, or let alone the aesthetics or more intricate aspects of 3D printing, but a distinction between something that you print and something that you construct. In 3D printing there is no building in the traditional sense. You don't have to solve any problems of engineering systematically. In fact, 3D printing allows for the exact opposite approach to how engineers used to think. Rather than starting with building blocks and working out how they can be configured into a complex structure, with 3D printing you set out with a structure of whatever complexity you seek, and the material becomes this thing. No tools, no assembly, no screws, no fixtures required. For most of the available methods there isn't even a bonding agent since the particles themselves stick together. The glue is the material itself. What you effectively do in 3D printing is you render your design physically. 3D printing therefore is worth examining briefly at a conceptual level. Before it became viable you could build or construct or assemble anything you are able to build or construct or assemble. This sounds obvious, but what it means is that you could make what you're building elements, bricks, beams, screws, joints, fillers, girders, and your skill or expertise at putting them together allowed you to make. The limitations, setting aside cost or brief, were dictated by the materials you had at your disposal on the one hand and by your engineering capacity on the other, thus making a highly ornate delicately patterned relief ceiling panel, for example, would require not only a particular type of wood, stone, clay or plaster that could take on and durably hold your design, it would also presuppose a level of craftsmanship and technical know-how that would allow you to actually produce its design. If you were an architect, builder, artist or designer, you had to learn your craft and master it. With 3D printing, you can use a vast array of materials, from cheap polymers to exceedingly strong metals like titanium, and yet your limitations, such as they are, are dictated mostly by your imagination and perhaps by the fundamental laws of physics. There is comparatively little expertise involved. It would be disingenuous to say none, since most 3D print processes require some degree of post-production which, to do well, is not necessarily easy and may in turn have to be learned. But there is no 
construction work, no calculation, not even really, in that sense, any trial and error. And in this particular point lies one of the most practical and applicable uses and therefore advantages of 3D printing. You can do whatever you want and then change a detail here, a parameter there, a set of rules or attributes elsewhere, and the printer will render out enough version altered in line with your amendments. Your trial and error turns into play, variations on your theme. And as 3D printing matures, you can now do this with increasing delicacy and precision down to molecular level or right up to an inhabitable one-to-one -one scale. This has many implications in terms purely of practicality, what can be built in the first place, in terms of cost, how expensive it is to generate and develop a particular design, and in terms of workflow, how do you arrive at your final object or building from your design. But sticking with the notion of a conceptual shift for one moment longer, it also has some fairly far-reaching consequences for our understanding of making things. Because if you can generate complex forms without tools in one go, then that means everything can become complex, multi-layered, in a sense sophisticated. You can integrate functionalities into textures, electronics into layers, dynamics into design. 3D printing then has the potential to give you new freedoms. And with new freedoms, of course, come new and very different challenges and responsibilities, because fundamentally it means you are your own boundary. And with unlimited options, which ones do you choose, according to which criteria? What are your priorities? If anything is possible, what? If anything is necessary? What good or beautiful or interesting or relevant or even just desirable? 3D printing is not alone in this, but it is rather, as we have seen elsewhere in this MOOC, part of a technological development that demands of us new and basic decisions. It asks, as other digital technologies ask, what do you want to do if you can do whatever you like? And that's what we mean by conceptual shift that is brought about by 3D printing.